Okay, great. Um, so very quickly, I'll just run through what our instructor gets to fix um, um, the internet glitch on its own end. Uh, I'm going to run through, cover, through, cover a bit of what was taught last, yesterday for the purpose of those that are just joining. And um, we're going to take through um, the introduction to HTML and um, you know, run through some elements of HTML tags, uh, what tags are and all of those good stuff. So very quickly, um, HTML, has it, as he has said, stands for Hypertext Backup Language. And um, for, for the purpose of those that are just getting started with tech or HTML, for example, it is used to design web pages using a markup language. And the best explanation we can give regarding that is about, um, for example, if you have experience using Microsoft Word, you can see now that from Microsoft Word, let me give an example, um, docs.google.com. I'm just going to give an example to show us um, what, what, what it, it looks like practically. So if you're coming from the Microsoft Word um, sort of background, if you have knowledge using Word or all of the Office editing tools, it's almost similar, but not, but, but not the same. The good thing is that you can write your text. So for example, I'm going to share a, a screen right now. For example, you can actually, you know, write a bit of text, right? So just like that, you have like a bit of text. Um, you have a bit of text. Now you, you can actually format like all of the text based on how you want the color to look like. If you want the text to be bigger, you know, and um, all of it. So in HTML, you are, you, are faced, you, are, you are faced with options like, you know, writing your lines of code and then formatting them using CSS. So going back to, going back to, uh, going back to our slide, going back to our slide, I've said it starts with hypertext markup language and it's a combination of the hypertext and the markup language. And um, just, just to note that HTML is sort of the most basic building block of everything you see on the internet, on the web, right? And it defines sort of the structure and meaning of the contents we have on, on the web or on, or on the internet. And um, for, for what we see on our website, it, um, what we see on our website is a replica of what exists, you know, what on, based on what we have written using HTML. I'm going to show you using a code editor, but I just want us to follow through a bit of content um, or sort of theoretical part of the introduction, and then we show you what it looks like on your code editor. And then um, for the purpose of those that are still just joining for the first time, um, we talked about a bit of um, code, code editors, just like we have with um, code, a bit of code editors, just as we have with um, Google Docs, right? And all, and all those good stuff. So Google Docs, Microsoft Words are example of word processing softwares. But when you're talking about HTML, there's what they call um, code editors or integrated development environment, IDE. Um, integrated development environment. So we, we shared some examples on how we can um, install our IDEs. I'm sure we, 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 we know, that, know that one of the, one of the most common IDEs, IDEs we're going to be making use of is um, Visual Studio Code, right? Um, if you don't understand anything I'm saying, please put it in the chat. I've talked about word processing software, just like Microsoft Word and the rest of them. But then when we are talking about development, we make use of integrated development environments or code editors, also known as code editors. And for the purpose of this training, we are going to be making use of Visual Studio Code. The Visual Studio Code is what we're going to use to type you know, um, uh, um, uh, HTML contents and then preview on a browser. Uh, this is some sort of history around HTML. You know, I don't think we should put ourselves about, you know, when HTML was first created, but then for the purpose of knowledge sake, um, it would be great to know that it was created by Tim Berners-Lee in 1991, but then that's just on the side. Um, we've talked about HTML being hypertext language, 
you know, sort of the link in between web pages. And if you're of this, I'm going to show you what a typical HTML um, boilerplate looks like. And um, from then, we're going to, you know, explain a bit of the features of HTML. Um, right away, I'm going to open a code editor. And um, I'll, I'll appreciate if you can confirm that you can see my screen. Yes. Uh, can you see? Okay, I'm not sure you can see that screen. So one second. One second, and then you should be able to see my code editor um, right away. So this is a typical code editor. It is called Visual Studio Code, right? And um, I, I want to believe everyone here have installed um, Visual Studio Code. Please put in the chat if you have installed Visual Studio Code. I, I'm just going to watch from, from there. Uh, put in the chat if you have installed Visual Studio Code. If you haven't, I will advise that you, if you haven't, I will advise that you go through the content on the MyTech Campus platform. We have highlighted a bit of ex, a bit of steps on how to install um, Visual Studio Code. And um, that should actually, you know, make the application installed in your system. So if you have it, you can open up the application. Um, I want to look through the chat now to see if, if we have lots of people that have installed Visual Studio Code. So um, just a few voices right here. One, two, three, four. Are we saying that um, the rest of the 27 of you all haven't installed Visual Studio Code? Is that implication? So um, to install Visual Studio Code, I'm going to show you a, a typical example. I'm going to show you a typical example. Um, so what you have to do is to just search for VS Code, right? And um, you'll be taken to um, a, this page. All you have to do is to click on Visual Studio Code. This is what we are going to be using for this training. You select Visual Studio Code. When it opens, it's going to show you is going to show you um, a bit of directions that you need to download on. It's taking quite a while because of my internet. But it's going to show you a download page where you have um, your this, the, the current version of your system shown to them. If you, have, if you use a MacBook, it's going to show you to download using a MacBook. If you use um, a Windows operating system, it's going to show you to you to also download using, um, if you're using a Windows operating system. Uh, when it's done downloading, you have to install. It's taking longer than necessary, actually. When you, you're done downloading, you will have to install, and then you're going to be shown um, this page, right? So to get started, our typical HTML code, um, I'm going to show you what the typical HTML code looks like. But then, like we all know, HTML is actually um, saved with a .html extension, right? Um, for those of us coming from a Microsoft or of word processing um, background, when we save our, for example, when we save um, our Microsoft Word document, what do you think um, it saves it as? Can we put it in the chat? I want to see um, those are following. When you save your Microsoft Word document, there's an extension or the, the, end, the ending part of the name you save it as. It usually comes with a dot something, maybe dot txt for a text or dot something. I want to see it in the chat. What do you think? Yeah, I can see good example. So dot docx or dot doc. So you can actually see it as dot docx, right? Or dot doc. So, but then in HTML, it is saved as dot html. So this way, this way, your browser, right, knows that what is going to what is going to interpret is 
I am a HTML document. And recall that the reason why I said browser is that um, when you browse, when you visit Facebook, when you visit Google, you don't visit Google using Microsoft Word. You visit Google using a browser. So it's only the browser that interprets your markup language, right? So a typical example, uh, trying to follow through um, what our content looks like. So a typical example of you know what a, a markup language looks like is this. So first thing first, you create a new document using control plus N, right? If you're on a Mac, you're going to use, let me just increase my screen. So if you're on a Mac, you're going to use, just focus on this screen right here. If you're on a Mac, you're going to use um, command key plus N. So command N or control N if you're on uh, Windows or you're on a Mac. And then you're going to save the page first off, right? Uh, you save it as, you know, it could be anything. So I'm going to put it in my desktop for now, or I could create a folder in my desktop, create new folder, call it HTML intro. It's going to be different because I'm using a Mac. Uh, and then you save, save, you create a name for your HTML document. So for example, if it were to be um, a, a Word document, you are going to save it as maybe, um, what do we call it? Can we put in the chat ideas? What should we call our HTML document? Please put in the chat. What do we call our HTML document? My first HTML book, right? Oh, I, let me call it five so it doesn't confuse us. So yeah, something that a good good feedback there. Um, Index.html works right well. Uh, but I just want to explain something. So if it were to be, yeah, my first HTML lesson. Thank you, Efe. So if it were to be, um, if it were to be, what's it called? A word processing document, it would have ended with .docx or .doc. But because this is not a word processing document it's actually a, a html document we are going to save it as what html so we must always indicate a dot html in every file that we save so when you're done you click save and um, you, are, you are actually shown you're actually shown um, a blank page where you can now begin to impute your code don't let this distract you uh, where you can impute your code. So the first thing first, you know, is about your HTML markup, which we're going to explain. You know, we're going to keep using as we walk through um, this lesson. So we're going to keep using our HTML markup, right? HTML markup. I'm going to show you how to create your first markup. So if you're following me closely, you create, first off, you create your first HTML, my first HTML file, and save it as a dot HTML um, extension. It's called extension dot HTML extension. And the next thing is that you need to create your HTML markup or the boilerplate. So when you when you are on VS Code, it's practically easy to create your HTML boiler. It's right it's actually easy for you to create your first html boilerplate and boilerplate is more like a standard structure so it doesn't have to cause confuse you so your standard structure of html document right so when i say boilerplate i mean standard structure of html documents Right, standard structure of HTML documents. So I'm going to be using this word repeatedly. Standard structure of HTML document. So to do that, you just have to type HTML, and then your code editor automatically shows you a bit of options where you have to select that you're going to be making use of the the standard HTML5 boilerplate. So this is not magic, right? I know some people might be like, "Ah, how did I get to see all of this code?" 
This right here is a standard boilerplate for HTML document, right? So all you have to do is to just type HTML and then you select this five showing that it's, um, you are get started with an HTML5 boilerplate. So there are quite some options here, but I usually click on that this um, HTML5. And then you can now see here that you have like your standard markup, right? You have your standard markup. So as you progress through this class, you're going to be, you're going to get to learn, you know, what H, all of these items here mean. All of these things, they're not confusing. You don't have to cram all of this. Your IDE, you know, is going to make life very easy for you learning HTML, you know, for the first time. So you're going to be shown what HTML tags are. For example, this um, contents here, H-E-A-D, is a tag. We're going, to be, we're going to teach you how to um, how tags are written, um, opening and closing tag. You can see here this, this is actually an opening tag, and this right here is a closing tag, and this right here are contents that stay in the heading tag, right? Um, sometimes people um, 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 use the word tags, use the word tags. Let me just put here tags and elements interchangeably, right? But then uh, when I say when I say tag, I also mean um, element. So, but this is an HTML element, but with the opening tag and with the closing tag. Right here, you see this ha it has an opening tag and a closing tag as well. Um, I recall that in the first onboarding call, we actually instructed that you all download um, some helpful um, plugins or extensions that's going to make your work easier getting started to code. So for the purpose of those joining this call for the first time, if you have VS Code installed, which is this application that currently, you know, gives us the opportunity to write all of this code that I've selected, all you have to do is to search for um, extension. This might be different from what you have, like the whole of this right here. It will be different from what you have on your screen because I've added a bit of other extensions, you know, to my code editor. So let me show you what, how you can get started with an extension. So all you have to do here is to look for this extension. I'm not sure you can, can you see? Oh, okay, I'm sure you can see. So you can have to look for this extension icon right here. Uh, you select the extension icon. What you have to do now is to, you're going to install two extensions and the purpose of this extension is to actually make our work easier on this journey the first extension you're going to install is beautify right it's the first extension we're going to install uh once you just type beautify it's going to show you a bit of it's going to show you uh yeah you're going to show you a list so um this is not some sort of advert or sort of sort of paid ad for the guys that built this extension, but then this is going to make our work easier. So you have to install Beautify with this logo. The next item you're going to install is Live Server. Right. The essence of um, this live. Let me close this one. Live Server. yeah live server so the next extension you're going to install is this live server so these two things are going to these two extensions are going to it's going to make our work easier on our journey like i said the beautify makes our code readable and live server makes it easy for us to preview and by preview i mean to see a live change of our code directly on our web browser. You can see from an example here, why you code right here, let me just zoom in. Why you code right here, uh, one second. While, while you code right here, you can see like a preview happening almost immediately. You can see here, uh, you can see that it's actually showing 
you know, almost immediately. So these are, these are actually two extensions that's going to make our work easier on this journey. So next thing is, um, I just hope that we are all following. Please put in the chat if you are following this conversation. I will appreciate if you can type in that you are following this conversation. I want to see responses. Good. I can see from Roger Michael and the rest of them. So this is a base, is a typical HTML boilerplate. Recall I said boilerplate is the basic structure of or sort of default structure of HTML documents. Currently, we are making use of the HTML5 boilerplates um, by typing HTML and then selecting five here. Now the next thing is about um, HTML tags. Let me just be sure that we are right. Uh, I think we covered all of this yesterday. We covered all of this yesterday. Yeah. So I've talked about HTML boilerplates. Um, before we jump right into tags, I'm going to just explain what um, you have here. So if you look closely at my code editor, you're going to see this highlighted item called doc type, right? You're going to see, you're going to see doc type. So doc type, right? Like I have in my slide here, sort of sends an instruction to your browser. And recall, you use your code editor to write your codes, to write your HTML content, to build your basic structure. And then you use your browser to show or a preview of what you've been able to write. So when you type this, one second, when you type, when you type all of this on your web, on your code editor, it doesn't show, it doesn't show all these items directly on your web page. It doesn't show all these items directly on your web page. Only what you get to see is um, some sort, some sort of uh, how do I put it? Some sort of preview of uh, this browser actually interprets all of these items here, these twelve lines of code. The browser interprets these twelve lines of code and then shows it to you on the on the front end. So I'm going to show you how that works, and um, uh, I'm going to you start that using the second extension I asked you all to install, which is called Live Server. Uh, what I have to do is I use my um, Control Shift P. Control Shift P. I'm going to just so it's Control plus Shift plus P, right? So you don't have to put this plus. What I mean is a button com com uh, combination of Control key, Shift key, and the P key, right? Um, if you are on Mac, you're going to use um, Command um, Shift. P, right so if you're on mac on if you're using macbook you use command shift p if you use a windows operating system um you're going to use control shift p um one second yeah so control shift p and then it shows you a, a model or a pop-up all you have to do is to type beautify right so i can decide to beautify this file or I can select all, I can select all the items here, right? And then beautify selection. So it automatically beautifies, you know, my selection. So I'm now going to show you, you know, how the browser identifies that this doc type is HTML and then shows it to you on your browser. So to do that, we are going to make use of the second extension I asked you to install, which is the live server. So I'm going to use the control shift P again and type and search for live server. So all you have to do is look for live server and then open with live server. Or you can use, use this button configuration. If you're on Windows, it's going to show you, I think it's control L or control O, one of those two. But I'm just going to select open with live server. Doing this um, will actually take me to this. Doing that should actually take me to my browser. 
yeah it should take me to my browser as you can see you're going to it's, it's, it has taken me to my my browser and um i think we call it sale i click on the folder name here um it's called sale i don't know did we call it sale or we oh i think i saved it on my desktop i guess um uh, sec Did we call it? Did we call it? Say, please, uh, I want you all to type in the chat. Um, just remind me. Okay, yes, we, I know we saved it on the desktop. Thank you. You guys are following. So I am going to. Okay, I, okay. Now this is this is a challenge. So what I have to do now is to, I have to change the location to, um, my current, uh, working directory. Right. If you can, if you see here. If you see here, um, I currently have like um, a working directory called um, it's called Open Source, right? But then I'm going to I'll, I'm going to create a new folder right here. I create a new folder. I'll call it Sale. No, let me rename it because I have another folder called Sale. So I'm going to call it Virtual. Then uh, I'm going to bring it out. Uh, okay, I think it's getting taking a while. So I, I want to bring it out. I think I've done that. Not yet. So it's taking a while. Anyways, let me just do this. Let me move this. I want I want to just put it in the working directory. Can I use? Let me reveal in Finder. So I want to move it to my working directory, and um, I'll just do this. Uh, give me a second. Documents. Let me look for this again. Just hang on a sec. So what I want to do now is I want to move. I want to move my the contents here into another reveal and finder. Yeah, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just move this guy here. Good. So that way, that way I have virtual sale here. And um, I have to copy all these guys. Create a new file using this um, icon here, new file. Call it um, my first html file dot html and um, i just paste in my content here so that's pretty much it so this way i'll go back to my browser i reload the live server and look for i'm going to look for virtual sale um, it's still it's still loading so with the moment is up i should see virtual sale yes so you can see virtual sale right here so what i have to do is to select virtual sale and then i can see my html document here so if i should click on it the browser automatically interprets the browser automatically interprets the contents that i have right here onto it so you can see here now that we've talked about doc type and i said that in doc type it tells the browser that this document that I'm creating is um, a HTML document, right? Um, it's going to be blank right now because we don't have content inside our tag, which is the body tag. So um, I'm going to show you how, I'm going to explain all of it up until the body tag. So it's going to show you an empty, empty, docu an empty page because you don't have content here. So just to 
um, you know, catch up with the curiosity of some other folks here that might be like, why do we have an empty tag here? So I can just decide to type in, let me type something that makes sense actually. Um, so right, I can type to, just type in something here. And then you can see now that we have that content right here. You get it. So this body tag now, I'm going to come back to body tag, but then just to, you know, satisfy the curiosity for those folks that are, you know, just getting started. So now we've covered, now we have covered, um, one second. Now we have covered um, HTML doc type. Like I said, it sends the instruction to the browser that it is an HTML document. And it also sends like a bit of other details like the HTML versions and all those good stuff. So the next item here that is interesting to us is this HTML tag. Uh, let me take this off so that I, I, I'm just going to cut this off. The next item here that's important to us now is this HTML tag. You can see here that it it is... Um, it was started here, and then there was a language that was specified that, oh, language EN. It can be language EN or language FR. So for EN, you have EN. It means that it is English. FR, just like that. FR should be what? Right? I want to see responses. So I want us to see if we are following. So FR could actually be France, AR Arabic, uh, French, I mean, not France, French, AR Arabic, and all, all this stuff, you know, you know, in Arabic, I think they write from R right to left. So all of these things will show to the browser that, okay, this content now, you don't have to speak, please turn off your, your mic. All of these contents here is an English typed um, markup, and then the browser shows it to you as English. You know, if it is Arabic, it shows that uh, this is sort of Arabic contents I would put out here for French content, you know, all of those good stuff. So um, that's pretty much it. But what's interesting here to us is this tag called HTML. And you can see here that for all our HTML documents, apart from this guy, so this guy now is doc type, it stays on its own. But here you can see here that both of them have to be written, some sort of um, like a bucket, right? So inside that bucket, or I'll call it a grocery. So I don't know, I know grocery, like if you go to ShopRite or um, Just Right, for example, you, you are given a basket. So this guy is now is a, it's actually a basket. This HM is a basket. So you can see now that it has an opening tag and a closing tag. We're going to discuss about tags later, but then you can see here that this guy started up first of us. Um, let me just delete this and then type it. So we have opening tag starts with A. Getting, you know, when we're in school, we usually you are taught um, less than or greater than. So you can see now the left angle bracket. So less than, for example, or left angle bracket. And then you type your HTML. Um, you specify the, the language, right? And then to specify the language, you have just type lang and then put your um, quotation marks, and then you close. Okay, my browser actually is, is helping me with, with the codes. So, and then you close it. You just have to put an EN right here. And then this is like the nylon, the, the shopping basket is broken because it's not complete. To complete the shopping bracket, um, um, basket, you have to put the closing tag forward slash HTML. So and what what you know identify you know identifies this one as opening tag, and this one as closing tag, is just this um, forward slash. So inside this content now you now have like the rest of these items. So I think that settles it for this HTML, which is um, the root element that acts as a container. So I didn't even read this. I just extended it to be a shopping basket. So it's more like a container that holds all the codes in your HTML document. The next item here is your head tag, right? I'm going to delete this. So you recall now that we've talked about the doc type and the HTML tag or the elements. Next is the head tag, right? 
And uh, for the head tag, it contains some sort of information, you know, about the documents, what you're trying to create. So at the later part of your training, you understand the importance of these items here. But right now, don't just disturb yourself about all these items. Viewport, Meta, and all of this. So just don't worry yourself so much about it. Your IDE is going to create all of this automatically for you. When you just type HTML and select five, it's going to create all of this for you. So you don't have to break the bank getting to you know memorize all of these items here. So like I said, the head tag, right, contains details of all you know the information for that your particular HTML document, right? And um, and by details I mean the title of the document, the I know we must have all heard of CSS before. If you have heard of CSS, please put in the chat. Yes, I have heard of CSS. Or if it's your first time here learning about hearing of CSS, and by CSS I mean CSS, right? This item here. If you've heard of CSS before, please put in the chat. If it's your first time, please put in the chat that it's your first time that you're hearing of CSS. So you can you with the head tag, you can communicate to the browser that okay, the title of my document is this. Okay, I can see some first time here. So CSS um, is more like, you know, we'll explain that later, but it's more like a visual visual display of HTML. HTML is more or less the skeletal framework. CSS is what makes it what makes your website beautiful, what makes Google attractive to you to search, make a search, or what makes Facebook attractive for you to always you know visit and be there like for five hours. So the head tag you know, sends detailed information to the browser on the kind of content that stays in, the kind of content that should be in your HTML document. And one interesting thing that we need here is this title tag or the title element. Now, if you, if you create, um, now for those that have background in word processing, when you save a, a, Word document, you can see you will be able to see now that the title of the documents at the top is going to change to the name you have you decided to save the documents with. So, if you look at my browser, um, you at the top right here, if I hover on it, you're going to see where is it? So, this was the item that, um, let me put the Lauren Ipsum. So, if you look here, you're going to see this content in my HTML document. So if you look at the top here, you are going to see the name document. You're going to see the name document, right? I don't know if, are we following? You can, you're going to see the name document. At the top right, just follow my mouse, you're going to see the name document, right? In this, in this document, with this, with the name documents now, it's showing on our, on our browser because we have specified here that this should be our title. So I want someone to give me a name in the chat on uh, uh, that we are going to change this name to. So please put in the chat what we should call this. Please put in the chat what I should change this to. I need responses. Please put in the chat. So first class. Okay. So eBay Joy is saying we should change the title. Okay, should we, okay, let's go with first HTML class, right? So we can put in um, eBay Joyce um, um, feedback and Roger Michael's feedback. So I'm going to call it first HTML class. So I'm going to save as Ctrl S, and then I'm going to go back to my browser, and then go back to the top. You can see here now that it has changed to what first HTML class. So you can see now that this is not even rocket science. This is this happened like it's like it's just for you to understand how this works, and then follow like the pattern, and then you can get your, your result. So you can see now that it has sent detailed information of what my HTML page should look like, also what the title page should look look like as well, right? And then our browser now shows that to our user. So that's like um, that part for the head tag. The next tag now is um, the body tag. I think we, we all know what the body tag you know, will, will do for us. So like I said, 
the body tag contains like the, our the complete what we see you know from the from top to bottom like that's an inside joke so from top to bottom what shows to our browser stays in the body tag i call the body tag to be the shopping the shopping cart or the shopping basket where you you know you put all your groceries in so for everything that shows in your browser uh you know it stays in in your body tag so if i want to call if i want to say this is raji michael michael's and and um i think it was raji michael and ebay joy i b e ebay joy's first cml documents i'm going to save this and go back to my browser right and then you can see here now that it shows that this is raji michael and ebay joy's first html document you can see it's pretty simple it is pretty simple all you need to do is to understand how these guys work where your content should stay and the kind of documents that goes into it so that is that explaining what uh, so, so to sort of sum, summarize i've talked about the html doc type i've talked about um the html container you can see now that the html wraps every other content in i talked about the head tag or the element that sends detailed information to our browser on for example what our title of our html document should look like and in the later part of our class also what our css should look like right or what our css should look like but then don't bother yourself so much about this it will be very much easier to comprehend as we proceed so um that is that for that what's our next item here we're going to you know explain or understand what um i, I think we talked about the elements and i said that we sort of use the word elements and tags interchangeably right we talk about elements uh some a bit of basic tags and then the attributes so attribute might be might come later on but i will explain what our basic tags are um, i think we've covered that for elements i've told you that um, elements are created using tags so they use they are actually used interchangeably so when i can, when i say tags sometimes i mean elements so elements are the, is actually the word you create elements using tags an example of tags are your head tag, your body tag, and then the HTML tag. They are also elements, remember, but then elements are created using tags. There are more, there are actually more tags, more like you, there are so many right, that we may not be able to cover in our, in our session, but, but then extra learning, make a Google search, reading more can actually you know, expose you to a few of other tags used in HTML. Um, recall I said that the element is defined by a start tag, some content, and an end tag. And what I mean by that is, take for example, this, um, our body tag. It's our body element, but it starts first with, it starts first with our opening tag, right? And our closing Sorry. and our closing tag you can see here our, how our closing tag and we have our opening tag so a, an opening tag and a closing tag and then there is something else a content the content can be practically anything you can see here a start tag some content and an end tag and um yeah so that's that's that for that so you can see here like this shows you an example right of an opening tag a content and a closing tag so this now i'm going to give an example using what we have on the screen here a p tag also known as paragraph tag you can see here that it has um this is a paragraph Let me disable um, auto GitHub Copilot. 
think, yeah, let me just double get to pilot. Okay. Okay. So you can see here now that we have the whole of this is, you know, the element. The whole of this is an element comprising of an open tag right here. The whole of this is the open tag or opening tag. A content, which is, this is a paragraph. And a closing tag. It's as simple as that. The body element, this is a body element, is comprised of, it comprises of, the whole, all of this is a body element, comprises of a, an open body tag. The whole of this now is now a content inside the body tag. And then it has a closing body tag. I hope that's clear. So if that is clear, please put in the chat that you can that it is clear. Um, let me know. If it's not clear, you can actually let me know so I can you know provide a bit of clarity. Then the next item now um, is um, types of of elements. So as we progress, we are going to see now that there are quite some examples of. Um, um, elements, right? We have the block element and the inline element, right? The block element and the inline element. When you get when you get started with CSS, you're going to, it's, it's going to be clearer to you what a block element looks like. So for a block element, it sort of takes the whole. For example, it takes like the whole. You can see these highlights, but then it takes it like to the end of the web page, right? Don't bother yourself about that now. Just have it in the back of your mind that for elements, you have block elements and inline elements. So we're gonna get started with, we're gonna get started with some basic tags, right? Uh, we've talked about the HTML tag. We've talked about the body tag. We talked about the head tag. And um, it is safe to, to know that different tags, you know, render different meanings. Right. For example, um, here is a list of tags. An example is a title tag, and um, you can see in our in our HTML boilerplate, you know, that different tags, you know, give out different meanings or it sort of interprets different meanings. So when you use the word title tag, the meaning is that this my browser show that this title of this document is called first HTML class. When you use body tag, it tells the browser that everything that is going to be enclosed inside me, which is a body tag, show it to our user on the on the screen of the of, of the browser. When you use the paragraph tag, it tells the browser that this item that is inside this paragraph or is uh, that is inside this tag is a paragraph. You know, when you have multiple paragraphs, you can be able to see like a bit of difference. I'm going to show you an example. Um, this is a, this is one of it. So I have here two paragraphs, right? And I'm going to save this and go to my browser. Um, this is going to change to the content I have there. You can see here now that it has shown to me that this is one paragraph and this is another paragraph so different tags you know sense different meanings so we have seen here what the title tag looks like and whenever it is written it comes up on the web page tag which is right here sorry yeah yes right here shows that um where is it shows that it's our first html class the next item is um the paragraph tag like I said, it defines a paragraph. For those of you that have background in word processing, right? It's very, it's, it's actually you'll be able to relate well to this when you use when you create paragraph in in Word. It you you get, you get to see like you know it shows that it's different from the other. Um, 
Another interesting tag that we're going to be using so much in, our, in this session is the um, heading tag, right? The heading tag. And it's depicted using, let me erase, let me just create a new element here, or new space here. So the heading tag, right? Um, and you can write heading tag using the H, um, you know, short form. So you just use H, all right, um, for heading tag. Don't worry, I know it's not complete, right? But the heading tag has a list of um, six different tags. And by that, what you have to do is to just keep putting one here. If it's a heading, if it's, if it's a top, or sorry, let me, let me try and break it down in very simpler words. When you use Google Docs, for example, let me come here. Um, when you use Google Docs, for example, you can see here that you can type heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, five, and heading six. So I'm going to explain what the heading tag is right here. So I'm going to heading. So the heading tag has like six different tags. Right, and then it is depicted using the H um, open tag and the H closing tag. But then what separates it from the other is the value that stays inside here. So if you are using your H one heading tag, you only have to put one here, one here. If you are using your H2 heading tag, you have to put H2 H2, just like that, down to H6. And um, another thing is, how does this heading tag, how does it look like? Let me put this to fix. Um, this is what it's. I'm just going to be reducing them that just like that. Um, this is 36. This would be 30. No, this will be 30. This will be 24, this will be 18, and this will be 14. So just like you have on my screen, for every of the tag 1 to tag 6, it shows you which of the tags will be bigger than the other. So when you use your H1, you should know that it's going to be bigger than when you use than the the tag when you use the H2 um, um, value. So we're going to show you an example right here. So I have H1 here. So this is a um, H1 tag, right? And I'm going to duplicate all of this into six different values. Um, H3, H4, and h5 down to h6 right are we following so yeah um sheriff dean ola please put in the chat what um, where you missed missed out on um, the session please put in the chat what should i take again so once you save this html document you go straight to your html file you are now going to see that it has shown us what Okay, we made a mistake somewhere. So let me change this to H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. So we're going to save this, and we can see now that all of this has changed. So when you are right, when you are, if you come from the word processing background, you can see now that there's some documents that will have a very big header, some will have a small header or heading, I mean, the other will have a smaller heading, just like that. So this is going to show you some sort of directions when you are creating heading tags in HTML. And like I said, creating headings, right, you use your H1 element, H2 elements, just like that, up onto H6. So 
um, to do a recap for the purpose of those that are uh, that you know um, I missed out. I was talking about HTML elements, and I said that elements begin with an opening tag, a content. All of these are the contents and a closing tag. An example is um, this H1, H1 element. All of this is the element. It has an opening tag. It has a content and it has a closing tag. I think the slide is going to sort of explain it better. You can see here now that it has um, the whole of this item here is the element. It has an open tag. It has a content and it has a closing tag. I think that's pretty much um, explanatory. So if, if it makes sense to you, um, Ola, please let me know in chat. Otherwise, we're going to proceed. So um, we've talked about the H1 tag. Um, there are quite a bit of non of other tags. I think we will, we will stop here with the tags just so that we can process our thoughts around it. There are more contents on the MyTech Campus platform. Your instructors are also ready on the Slack channel to provide responses. Your colleagues are also ready to help you out you know, on what you missed. So I'm going to just show us a bit of other um, tags. Let's talk about the heading tag. Um, yeah, one last thing. Uh, creating comments, creating comments. Um, let me just type it here. So comment in HTML. So to comment in HTML, what you have to do is to use um, your right left angle bracket, use your exclamation mark, put a bit of um, um, dashes or they call hyphen, right? And then you can pipe, you know, anything inside here. So the essence of comment is that it explains to someone what you are trying to do in your code. So, for example, if I want to create a heading tag that says um, "Welcome to my first um, web page." So I can put a comment here that says this tag welcome um, welcomes users to my website or web page. And the interesting thing about HTML tags is that the browser understands now that this is a tag and it doesn't show it to um, the users on the web browser. So I'm going to save this and then show on our web page. And then we can now see that this will change to welcome to my first web page. If you notice, I was explaining comments in HTML. If you notice, it did not show us the comments. But anybody that comes to my code editor we'll see that, okay, this stack here talks about welcoming users to my web page. So this is pretty much simple. So I, I hope that um, the class has been quite insightful. We've been able to get started with the um, HTML boilerplates. I know there are quite a few folks here that have gone past this stage because of the contents that we have on the My Tech Campus platform, but then it's still fine, right? Um, we're going to just walk through all of this up until you're done with JavaScript. And I believe that you guys are also going to get this clearly. So we've been able to introduce the HTML boilerplate. We've talked about the doc type. We talked about um, elements in HTML. We talked about the opening tag and um, the closing tag. These are quite examples of opening and closing tag. This also is an opening tag. Sorry. This right here is an opening tag. And this is the closing tag. This right here is a heading tag with an opening tag and a closing tag. Recall that I said that HTML elements um, are made up of opening tag, the content, and the closing tag. 
Um, we explored a few um, examples of tags, which is the heading tag that's made up of six headings, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the paragraph tag made up of um, just um, the opening tag P and the closing tag right here, P with a forward slash. So I think um, that is pretty much 